Hey guys, it's BassQuest. If you've been following along with the recent videos, you know that we've been doing some map studies and they've been related specifically to the fall transition or what I call the fall bass migration that everybody talks about. So in this video I'm gonna link right here, I gave you five key ways that you can find bigger fish during the fall transition. And in another video I'm gonna link right here, I specifically talked about the spot on a spot answering a subscriber question about that because on each area that's really good to fish there's always one small key area where the biggest fish in that area will be and so what you want to do is find those spots take your time graph those areas and make sure that your first cast in the future when you're going to that area you're casting right to where the really big fish the big territorial fish is going to be so today what we're going to talk about again like promised in that first video there is breaking down the individual areas that i like to fish for fish during the fall transition and the first one that we're going to do is creek fishing now i know everyone's heard about the bass migrating you know you follow them from the mouth of the the river and you follow them way back into these creeks and the fish will be in the back and if you find the bait you'll find the fish well in the southeast and in a lot of lakes what happens is that's not the case at all. There's so much bait in some of these lakes around me that if you find bait, great, you found bait. I mean, literally you can go anywhere on the lake and if you're not graphing bait, you're doing something wrong. So how does that help you catch fish? In my opinion, it really doesn't. So what we really have to start doing, instead of getting in the bait fish's head, we're gonna get in that bass's head. We're gonna start looking at our mapping right here. We're gonna find those transition areas. We're gonna follow the actual creek channel back and see where the stopping points are. Where does it swing? Where does it swing into a point? Where are the little areas where these fish can set up and feed? That's what's important. So I'm gonna give you a few key ways that you can stay on these creek fish. One, you have to understand what kind of lake you're fishing. Depending on where you are in the country or depending on what kind of lake you're on, around me we have highland reservoirs, we have you know TVA or Tennessee River reservoirs where it's dam driven and stuff like that. We also have natural lakes with vegetation that fish a little bit different. So what happens in these different kind of lakes is you have different kinds of forage. Um, if you're in a highland reservoir that's a spotted bass lake, you might have a herring lake on your hands and those fish will act differently because the bait itself acts differently instinctually. Um, around me, a lot of our lakes are shad lakes and so fish are gonna be keyed in on gizzard shad and threadfin shad as the fall progresses. But in a lot of these natural lakes, the primary forage is actually bluegill. So it's something that you really have to just kind of, when you're running around, you always have to keep it in the back of your mind. When you catch a fish, look down their throat. What are they spitting up? When you're looking around and you find some clean water, what bait fish are you seeing? When you look at your graph, you can tell a lot of times by the shape, you know, if you got a bunch of little dots running along the bottom or clouded up just off the bottom, that's probably bluegill. But if you've got everything tightly packed on there or packed into different schools, well, you might be a shad lake or you might have a herring lake on your hands. So that's something you always have to keep an eye on. That's something that you have to keep in the back of your mind because it's gonna change your strategy. All right, point number two here. We have to understand how fall weather affects a creek. So in the fall, what happens is you're gonna start having fronts move in. It's similar to what happens in the spring where you've got some nasty weather and then it's just incremental weather that's going up and down. You got different fronts that are moving in. And so in the back of a creek, especially in a creek that you know runs further back, you'll have a lot of runoff that'll come out of that creek. So what does that mean? That means raising water levels. It also means current. It means dirtier water potentially, or at least, you know, mud lines or transition areas. Those are all things that I'm looking for and trying to adapt to. A lot of times in the fall, you know, where you crush these fish day to day is going to change. And so you kind of have to adapt to what's going on, adapt your baits to what's going on. But one rule of thumb for me is if the water is pumping out of my creek and it's dirty, I'm going to get on that first edge. That's that's what I'm going to try first is where the, the dirty water meets the clean water on that hard edge there. That's usually really good. Now when the dirty water first starts pumping in there really good, a lot of times <clears throat> the individual areas that you were catching fish before up there are still good. But as a, you know, a day or two goes on, it gets tougher until the water starts to clean back out again. So it's all, you know, every creek clears up at a certain rate. You have to kind of understand your area, your lake, in order to know, hey, this creek is this bigger deep creek. It's probably already clean now, but this creek over here is gonna be like three more days before it cleans out. 
those are all things that again we're, we're putting in the back of our mind as we gain experience as we're out there on the water all right point number three where you have to understand what kind of creek you're in now for me i determine it a couple different ways there's one kind of creek i call a dead end creek and what happens is when it necks down at the end of it there's just a ditch there's an area that runs back but the creek bed is dry for most of the summer that is not the kind of creek that i want to be fishing in most of the time in the fall it just doesn't seem to hold the number of fish or the size of fish that i'm after i'm looking for a wet creek i'm looking for a creek that stays a creek all year round that has water flow all year round and it keeps fish that push way way back in there so when this necks down becomes a flat becomes a delta and then becomes this little narrow creek that might only be a couple boats wide it goes for miles and what will happen is your really big fish in your lake a lot of times you know big predatory fish like striper or really big large mouth really big small mouth will push way way up i'm talking miles up these creeks so what happens during the fall transition they start moving out they start especially on a lake with any kind of drawdown they'll start to move out as the weather changes as the days get shorter and they actually come out and meet the bait as it's coming in most guys and you've seen it on a million videos everybody talks about oh you know you gotta you know get at the mouth of the creek and you're gonna follow these bait fish back you're gonna follow the bass back if you want to catch really big bass and you want to catch bass that haven't been pressured for most of the summer get your butt to the back first figure out where those fish are as they come out and that'll help you out a lot all right so number five last but not least we actually mentioned it in the first video that i linked up there earlier and that is always start with a small creek first if you're on a new body of water or you're on a body of water that you're not confident on or not familiar with you don't want to pick the biggest creek in that you know arm of the river arm of the lake whatever you want to call it and then try to break that down it'll be very difficult for you what we're going to do is you want to find something manageable just like we talked about in that video well we're going to get a smaller creek that we can easily fish and fish it quickly Another thing in that smaller creek, I want to have several different kinds of cover. I want to have rock transitions. I want to have a flat. I want to have little creek channels and making a delta, an area where bass can corral in the back, in the middle, and it allows me to fish that very fast, figure out where the fish are in their stage of migration, whether they're all the way in the back, whether the fish I want to catch are back there, or whether they're just pushing in and they're on those transition banks. That'll really cut down on the time you've got in finding these fish because a lot of the best bites in the fall, especially for any kind of schooling fish or big groups of fish, is in the afternoon. These fish actually, a lot of times, during the night, they break up on these big expansive flats. And what happens is during the day, they kind of get back together and as the day goes on, they start to corral bait and they centralize in different key areas. And what'll happen is you can just get in there at the end of the day and really really crush them so the homework that you do at the beginning of the day where you're finding the creek that's got the most fish in it that's got the right kind of cover in it, it's got the right kind of setup in it that homework is going to pay off in that last three hours of fishing all right i hope those five tips right there help you stay on the right caliber of fish this fall because that's one of the most difficult things is to stay consistent on size especially let alone numbers so hopefully these tips will help you catch those bigger than average fish, those tournament winning fish, the trophy fish that you're looking to catch. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you hit the thumbs up for me. Subscribe to the channel, guys. It really helps me out. I know a lot of you guys don't subscribe to any channels, but it's free. You don't have to do anything. Just literally go down there, click subscribe. It's like a little icon right down there. But anyway, share it around with your friends, unless you just don't want them to know what's up and want to keep all this to yourself. I hope this week finds you out on the water, and I'll catch you there.